Hey guys, I am trying to focus this, there we go. Okay, so I took this little thumbnail and I'm turning it into a rough sketch. So I'm like blowing it up, trying to get my perspective in. And um, I just didn't want this to be like a super long video. I just wanted it to be short and sweet and get to the point. Okay, so when you're uh, doing like from a thumbnail like this and it's got a lot of elements and a lot of perspective, always do a rough sketch, a bigger version rough sketch because then you can work in your elements and you can put down your perspective and you can make it look believable. Um, this is kind of one of those things that a lot of people screw up on is they do a thumbnail it's really small and then they go to a bigger version and then they ink that and that's their masterpiece like I've done that as well um, it depends on what I'm doing if I'm doing a figurative sketch with not a lot of background elements hell yeah I'm gonna do the easy way out but if I'm doing a sketch and it's got a lot of elements and it's got a lot of details I am doing a rough sketch before I do anything um, I am taking um, even if I blow it up just a little bit, like if I did like this, then I take it into Photoshop and blow it up the rest of the way and then I'd light box it onto my watercolor paper or illustration paper, whatever I'm doing. Um, I do watercolor, so I don't do watercolor, anyway. But like, you, this step is probably, like this is a very important step, the thumbnail, but this, the next step, the rough sketch stage is also very important. Um, this is where you work out your composition problems, your like, uh, if there's tangents anywhere. A tangent, uh, by the way, for those people who don't know, is when two lines touch and it's like two intersection points where two lines touch and there's probably something in here. I'm trying to always be consciously aware of it, so, okay. So if I had her shoulder ending at the book, that kind of creates a whole line and it's not like, it It creates a distracting point and that'll draw the viewer in and they'll just stare at that and they won't look at the rest of the image because it's one of those things that draw an eye. So that's why I want a space and I want to put her garment here and then I want to have a bit of space and overlap um, between those two so they don't create a awful tangent. So also in here, uh, the um, the fireplace behind her was going to actually tangent with the book, so then I just moved it a little bit, and it creates space and it creates depth. Tangents will flatten your image. You don't want that. You want to create depth. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, when you're doing your rough sketch, don't be afraid to do construction lines. Like for the mantle, I'm drawing through her. Uh, you don't see it, but when I first did the book stand, I drew it before I drew her, and I drew through, and I made sure that it was solid, and it was um, it was drawn properly in perspective before I drew her. And what that is is it's building elements in the drawing that are in perspective properly so that you don't get drawn out of the drawing and you're like, wait a minute, or the illustration, and you start looking at the perspective and you're like, something's off. Because people may not be able to describe to you what is off specifically, but they will know something is off in your work if it is. Like right now, I'm having an issue with the mantle. I think this line actually should be up a bit like that and that should go like that and it's just a small fix and then I have to fix over here. So, <laughs> we just draw it through again and then we just draw through here. Okay. Like, I'm not going to use those lines. I'm going to clean this drawing up. I'm going to like darken the lines or I'm going to throw like a really cheap ink on it and then I'm going to light box it onto the next um, onto my uh, watercolor paper. So, that's a tangent. 
I'm trying to consciously be aware of my tangents and not make them. It is hard because I'm just like, oh god, I'm just gonna draw a pretty picture. But when you are drawing illustrations and you want to illustrate something, you have to be very aware of these things. And when I was in school, I was really bad at them and I didn't, I wasn't making conscious decisions to avoid them. And that was one of my downfalls when I was in school. I was, I was just pumping out work and I wasn't really paying attention. To make good art, you need to have good observation and you need to realize the mistakes that you're making and to be able to crea correct them. Also, um, in the planning stages, that's when you get your anatomy down and you make sure that you are drawing your figure correctly. If you can't figure out a pose, you go to another page and you draw like a small version of it and then you draw it again and you figure out the pose and then you go to your rough sketch and instead of erasing the sketch like a thousand times you erase it you figure it out on another piece of paper and then you try and recreate that on your sketch um, it'll make it a lot easier for you you won't ruin the sketch like this hand was giving me hell like I could not figure out that hand and I kept erasing and erasing and the paper actually starts to take wear. This is only cheap bond paper. This is printer paper. It's not good quality paper. So you want to be able to like you want to be able to uh, to not destroy like when you have the rest of the image you don't want to destroy one portion of it. If by chance you do you can just stick a little post-it note on it Hold on. Eh. note. If it's really bugging you, and then you can redraw it. Um, I'm not really one to use post-it notes, but it is a really, really helpful uh, uh, thing to do because you are able to fix the drawing and not destroy the rest of the drawing or erase something that you really like. mantles having all kinds of candles on them <coughs> also um i took another video but it got too long and i was just rambling and ranting so i deleted it that's why you guys got to see like the this is the last half of this uh, i have to still put all the jars in the cat in um okay so i'm just gonna give this a bit more space and let's tie these up a bit more and get some more details in here Okay, so when you are creating um, a background and you have foreground and background elements, you want your background elements or you want your foreground elements to overlap over your background elements so that it creates a sense of depth. Um, this is really important when you're doing illustrations like this where there's a lot going on to create depth so it looks realistic and it looks believable and people aren't going to be like, wait a minute, that's behind this but it's actually in front of that so it, it doesn't make sense. So you have to be consciously aware of what you're doing and what elements you are in your background and in your foreground and to and where they're their overlaps are to make a good like conscious decision like sorry, to make uh, good illustration choices so it is important to make sure that your overlaps are actually where they say they are or sorry I have to raise this hat a bit it's in the wrong position um, like that your overlaps are in the right spot sorry I know that was the most long-winded fucking version to get that little portion of sentence out <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so, do -de -do -do -do. okay, yeah, so when you are drawing, you want to, if you're having trouble, like, with this cat, I might go and do some research and draw some cats on another page before I draw this cat, because I'm not competent in my animal drawing, and I want to practice it. Don't ever think, like, I will throw elements down on other pages and you'll see pages in my sketchbook with just weird objects. That's usually me trying to figure out something so I can put it into an illustration so I know how to draw it. Um, and like loosely putting in things and loosely putting in elements uh, before you start doing the good lines on them is a very helpful key as well, especially when you have something that is supposed to look cluttered pardon me, uh, clutter 
in order to do believable clutter you need to like have overlapping elements and it's just easier if you throw them in um, loosely and then you can start defining them pushing and pulling figuring out where the space is and what are the details in them so with the potion jars I want them to look like she has so many potion jars and there's all kinds of little magical artifacts and everything around um, I'll even put some on the top shelf which isn't great if you have a cat because cats are dicks and they like to throw things on the floor at least my cat does uh, Mara. as soon as I want to sit down to draw she's like I'm going to come and sit on your book and I'm like no you're not you're going to go sit on Brendan or my partner I'm like I uh, I don't need you here right now you can go read books somewhere else you don't need to be on this book I don't know, it's like an ingrained thing in cats, like, because my, um, boyfriend's, um, mother's cats, every time I'd sit down to sketch, they would be on my book, like, what are you doing? Can I help? This is a really nice spot. I'm gonna lay here. I don't know if it's like they see a square and they have to, like, sit on it or what. Anyways, <laughs> cats are crazy. Um, yeah. Anyway, back on topic. I get so off topic sometimes. Oh, jeez. Anyways. Alright, so this video is about, probably going to be around 12-13 minutes long, that's okay, I have to work on her face, I don't like the way these eyes are turning out, but my pencil is also incredibly dull, so I'm just going to fill up the rest of the shelves with the jars, Maybe like a head jar or something. spider pet as well. She had a toad on her hat in the thumbnail, but I don't know if I'm going to give her a toad in this one. I might just make her a spider. Anyway, and then more bottles. These are things. Yeah, so again, the overlap will create depth and give your shelves a little bit more um, believability for the amount of clutter that is on them and the bottom shelf of books. So, okay. So I'm going to keep building up this, adding more details in, then I'm going to go through and tighten all the lines. Uh, the next step after this is done is transferring it to watercolor paper. So I will get my light box out, I will tape this drawing to the back of my watercolor paper so it doesn't slide. That does happen. Use low tack tape and then you can uh, trace out your image after you trace it out you can tighten all the lines add in line thickness and width and all that different stuff um, or line weight <laughs> is the proper term for that and then uh, then it's time to paint um, I don't like to ink until after I'm done my painting now that might be a downfall on me but I find it easier to blend and I tend to scrub when I do watercolors. So I'll put watercolor down and then if something goes wrong, I'll like scrub it out with a brush. I find that if I do that and it's inked, the ink bleeds everywhere, even if it's waterproof. So um, yeah, I'm going to finish this and then I'll trace it and I'll probably do the painting video tomorrow. I think this is probably my last video today. Who knows with me <laughs> anyways I hope you guys enjoy this video and enjoy some of the tips that I put down I'll try and make notes in the comments for you on everything I covered in this video so that you guys can have little reminders and just make yourself some notes as well anyways I hope everyone enjoyed the video have a great day if you have any questions about this process or any of my other processes please leave it in the comments below and I'll try and answer it when I see it bye guys